Two questions. Number one, why is Mel Gibson fighting a beaver puppet? Two, how did this movie get made? The Beaver is a 2011 dark comedy about depression. It is so pitch black dark, it's basically a drama, with a talking beaver puppet. The movie was not a hit, it was a failed comeback attempt for Mel Gibson after anti-Semitic tirades, DUIs, and allegations of abuse. But you can't forget that this movie is deeply, unflinchingly weird. It got made at a time when the top 10 movies at the box office were all parts of larger franchises. You guys really look great together. How did this happen? Allow me to briefly explain. If you go to screenwriter Kyle Killen's Blogspot blog, there's a clue. A post from December 11th, 2008 called Blacklisted. That's because in 2008, Kyle Killen landed on the top of the blacklist. Since 2005, a survey called The Blacklist has recorded the most liked, unproduced screenplays bouncing around Hollywood. Industry insiders submit their favorite unproduced screenplays, and then the anonymous votes are tallied and published. It's that simple. But it's quickly become a huge source of buzz, and it's based on scripts alone. And by looking at the Blacklist's success, you can learn something about how all of these movies, from number one to number 216, actually get made. When Franklin Leonard started his Blacklist survey, he didn't have a master plan, just a big idea. You have a much greater chance of making a great movie with a great script than you do if you don't have one. So he started something in December 2005. The Blacklist started as a survey. My job was, I was working for Leonardo DiCaprio's film production company. My job was to find great scripts. I felt like I was doing a very bad job at my job. I wanted to do a better job. I sent an email to 75 of my peers and said, send me a list of your 10 favorite screenplays that haven't yet been produced. And in exchange, I will send you the combined list. They all voted. I put it all on a spreadsheet, ran a pivot table, output it to PowerPoint, put a quasi-subversive name on it, the blacklist, which was a, a reference both to the Hollywood blacklist of the McCarthy era and a conscious inversion of the notion that blacks somehow need to signify bad, and sent it out. I think that the blacklist only could have come into existence at the time that it did. First blacklist went viral the same weekend that Lazy Sunday went viral from Saturday Night Live. The way in which we consume information online and the way in which we share information online, that was, I think, the beginning of, of that moment where like all of those relationships and all of sort of what we were comfortable with in terms of sharing information for better or worse started changing. Suddenly, a list of great stories could show up in one place and be distributed around the world, thanks to the internet. That 2005 blacklist included future hit movies like Juno. But to understand its real influence, you have to go beyond the list. Let's say getting a movie made requires a certain amount of buzz. Let's make the metaphor really literal here. Take 2011's top movie, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part two. It's a franchise, last one was a hit, it has huge stars, there's no question about buzz. It gets made. Now imagine a movie like The Beaver. I think it's important to remember that every year there are something like 50,000 screenplays registered at the Writers Guild every year. If you are a particularly industrious reader, maybe you'll read 1,000 screenplays a year. So obviously there's a gap of some 49,000 scripts just in that single year that are submitted to Hollywood generally that you're not gonna read. Now, The Beaver was not plucked from nowhere. Kyle Killen had representation, and it had been picked up by a production company. Steve Carell was even attached before the 2008 Blacklist came out. But this movie was not Harry Potter. Winning the Blacklist made the buzz public, and at the same time, sustained that buzz through actor and director changes. It kept going until a movie about a talking beaver puppet improbably, miraculously, actually got made. We just say, send us a list of your favorite screenplays that haven't yet been produced. 
you end up with a list that includes everyone from Aaron Sorkin and David Benioff, and people who literally, this is their first screenplay and they've just arrived in Hollywood, or they're still living outside of LA. Kyle Killen was not yet a Hollywood insider, but the blacklist clearly helped his movie keep buzzing. Dissecting hype is hard. Take 2012's Argo. It got 28 votes on the 2010 blacklist. It already had a reputation. It was based on a great 2007 Joshua Behrman Wired article, optioned by George Clooney. They got former CIA agent Tony Mendez involved, so it had energy, but the buzz kind of leveled off. Then, after the 2010 Blacklist came out, Ben Affleck decided to direct. The Blacklist didn't make Argo or Juno happen, but it got the scripts noticed. It didn't single-handedly greenlight the hundreds of movies it's featured. Some you've heard of, some you haven't. But it has amplified buzz that isn't about big stars in amusement park ride adaptations, toy-friendly sequels, or superhero franchises. It's buzz about words. Stories. Today, The Blacklist is a well-oiled machine, including its own podcasts, events, and online submission network. And it's all focused on generating hype about writing. I know when I am reading a good script because the rest of the world ceases to exist. And when you're finished, you're a little sad because you don't get to spend any more time in that world and with those characters. The Beaver was not a box office hit. It ended up in 216th place in 2011. The Rotten Tomatoes rating, 61%. Fine, but not great. In the beginning of The Beaver, there's a scene where Mel Gibson is about to walk back to his car and drive home. But then he stops. Mel sees something mangy and weird in the pile of trash. He pulls The Beaver out. And then, everything changes. <laughs> 